So here you'll see my uh, cable setup for my Dell 5324. Um, I picked this thing up off eBay for like 90 bucks. It's a good solid switch, but uh, one of the things I ran into was that it uses a serial port for the console. So there you see I have a serial to USB cable I picked up off eBay for about 10 bucks or so. Next I have a set of uh, the DB9 to RJ45 connectors. These aren't crossovers or nothing special. You can get these things for two, three bucks at a pop if you find a good deal on them. This little bad boy here is the one that makes the magic happen. This is a, it's a female RJ45 to a male RJ45 crossover. There you can see a little uh, schematic about how it crosses over. And then this is just a regular standard Cat5e cable. This little guy here is a uh, it's a female to female DB9 null modem connector. You could use this in place of that black RJ45 Cisco cable that I just showed. And you see here that you would just plug this into the serial cable, and then you would plug it into the switch. Without this, you would not be able to connect to the switch. You need some sort of crossover for this switch. So the way I'm using this is I take my RJ45 crossover cable and I plug it into my DB9 to RJ45 connector and then I use my Cat5e cable and then I'm going to plug it into another RJ45 to DB9 connector. So this way I have just created a DB9 female to female crossover cable. So I could use this like this if I had a computer that had a serial port. Otherwise, if I needed serial to USB, I could just use this cable in addition to the cable I have just made. And that's pretty much it. You now have a complete crossover cable from USB to serial or serial to serial. So here you see the switch itself. Like I said, it's a Dell PowerConnect 5324. It's a 24-port gigabit switch. And there you can see the console port there that we're going to be plugging into. Notice the numbers underneath. And those will all come into play whenever we come to connecting to the switch via putty through this cable. So you basically just want to have the switch off. And then go ahead and plug in the cable there. And then you'll take the other end and plug it into your PC. And uh, you'll go ahead and fire up. You, you can either use Telnet or I'll be using putty in this case to connect to the switch and configure it. When connecting to the switch via terminal, in this case, like I said, we're going to be using PuTTY, it's very important that you use a serial connection. And in this case, I'm going to be using COM port 3 because that's my serial line. And you want to use a baud rate of 9600, a data bit of 8, a stop bit of 1, a parity bit of none, and flow control of none. It's very important that you set the flow control to none, otherwise this won't work. And then for a keyboard, you want to set it up to a VT, VT100 style keyboard, and I use Control H on the backspacing because the backspace key won't work. And if you're not sure about your COM port, you can go to the computer management and you can see your COM port there, like you see in this case, mine's three. And then that's it. We're going to go ahead and open up the session. Now the switch is off, so I'm going to go ahead and boot this up, and you'll see it start up here in a second. And there it goes. Now, note at this point, if you were using the wrong type of cable, like a non crossover, that you wouldn't get any output on the screen at all. It would just sit there at the blinking cursor and it wouldn't do anything. Now you're going to see the switch boot up, and it'll take a second because it runs through a series of checks and post processes and everything like that.
And there you go, it looks like the Switch is finally fully booted up. And at this point you just hit return and it'll give you your console so you can input commands. Now, to configure the switch, the first thing we want to do is type in the enable command, and this will give us a privilege session. And then, next thing you do is you type in configure, and then we're going to type in username space admin space password space Dell space level space 15, and that's going to give us an admin account the password of Dell with a level 15 privileges which is Dell's administrator privileges on the switch and then we're going to go and configure interface space VLAN space 1 and we're going to set the IP address for that and it's going to be IP space address space 192.168.2.2 with a subnet mask of 24 bits and then exit from that And then we're going to go ahead and set the default IP gateway, which is IP space default dash gateway space 192.168.2.1 is the IP we'll be using here. I see I flipped that up. I guess it IP dash default gateway is the command we want to use here. And then we're going to go ahead and set the SNMP server space community space private to read write and uh, that I'm just following the Dell documentation there on that one and uh, then we're gonna go ahead and exit and let's check the IP for the interface of VLAN 1 and there you see that it took our IP So now the whole point of doing that is so that we can now access the switch via the web management that's built in. So by going, opening the web browser and typing the IP, you see that we're now able to pull up the management. And then we'll log in using that administrative account that we just created via the command line. And boom, we're in the switch. And now we have all of the access to all of the configuration of the switch itself. Now that we know this works, one important thing to note is that we have to copy this configuration to the switch, otherwise when we reboot it, we'll lose it all. So the way to do this is using the command copy space running dash config space startup dash config enter, and it will then copy the running configuration to the startup, and then exit from that. To reset the switch back to factory, make sure you type in the enable command to give you a privilege prompt, and then you'll type delete space startup dash config, and then answer yes to the prompts. And once this command's complete, you'll type the reload command hit enter and then answer yes to those prompts and then the switch itself will go and reboot and come back as it was from the factory and that completes my little tutorial on uh, configuring your Dell PowerConnect 5324 switch uh, see the information below for links to my website with uh, more info on the specific commands and everything and uh, thank you for watching